Have you ever felt that your life is being guided by an unseen force, nudging you towards a path that is uniquely yours? This feeling might be more than just intuition. It could be the universe signaling that you are one of the chosen ones. But with this profound sense of purpose comes a crucial responsibility, understanding and respecting the law of karma. Break it and you could face dire consequences, both in the physical world and the spiritual one. The meaning of karma. Karma, the ancient principle of cause and effect, governs our lives in ways that are both subtle and profound. Every action we take, every thought we harbor, and every word we speak sends ripples through the fabric of the universe, influencing not only our future, but also the futures of those around us. For the chosen ones, those who feel a higher calling or a deeper purpose, the stakes are even higher. The actions you take resonate more strongly, and the consequences of violating the laws of karma can be far-reaching. One of the most fundamental laws of karma is the law of cause and effect, often summarized by the phrase, as you sow, so shall you reap. This principle emphasizes that every action has a reaction, and the energy we put out into the world will eventually return to us. For chosen ones, this means that maintaining a positive and compassionate demeanor is essential. Any negative actions or harmful intentions can create a cycle of suffering and hinder your spiritual progress. Imagine a ripple in a pond. When you drop a stone into the water, the ripples spread out, touching everything in their path. Your actions are like that stone. A kind deed or a harsh word can have far-reaching effects that you may not immediately see. Understanding this interconnectedness is key to navigating the responsibilities that come with being a chosen one. Consider the story of a wise sage from ancient India, a figure revered for his deep understanding of karma. This sage lived in a small village and was known for his wisdom and kindness. One day, a young man came to him, troubled and seeking advice. The sage told him a simple yet profound story. Once there was a farmer who planted two seeds. One seed was for a beautiful flower and the other for a poisonous plant. He tended to both with equal care. In time, the flower bloomed and brought joy to many, while the poisonous plant caused harm to those who unwittingly touched it. The farmer realized that while his intentions were to cultivate both, the outcomes were vastly different. He learned that his responsibility was not just in the planting, but in the awareness of what he was cultivating. This story highlights the essence of the karma law that chosen ones must not violate. It is not enough to simply act. You must be mindful of the consequences of your actions. Every thought, every word and every deed must be aligned with your higher purpose and the greater good. In many Eastern traditions such as Buddhism and Hinduism, this concept is deeply ingrained. The practice of mindfulness and compassionate action is seen as a path to enlightenment. The Buddha taught that by cultivating positive karma through right action, right speech and right thought, one can break free from the cycle of suffering and achieve spiritual liberation. For chosen ones, this means living a life of integrity and purpose. It means recognizing that your actions have the power to uplift or harm, to create or destroy. It requires a commitment to self-awareness and a dedication to nurturing the positive seeds within you while being vigilant of the negative ones. Buddhism, while sharing similarities with Hinduism regarding karma and rebirth, places a strong emphasis on the intention behind actions. The Buddha taught that karma is not a system of rewards and punishments meted out by a divine being, but rather a natural law of cause and effect. The quality of one's intentions, whether rooted in greed, hatred or delusion, or in generosity, love and wisdom, shapes one's future experiences. Sikhism, though more modern in origin compared to the other three, also acknowledges the concept of karma. Sikhs believe that one's actions in this life determine the circumstances of future lives, but they also stress the importance of grace, nada, and the divine will, who come. The Guru Granth Sahib, the central religious scripture of Sikhism, 
highlights the balance between personal responsibility and divine grace in the journey towards spiritual liberation. In the African philosophy of Ubuntu, there is a saying, I am because we are. This reflects the belief that our humanity is interconnected and our actions impact the collective well-being of our community. This philosophy aligns closely with the principles of karma, emphasizing that our individual actions contribute to the greater whole. For chosen ones, this means understanding that your spiritual journey is not just for your own benefit, but for the benefit of all those around you. Navigating the complexities of karma requires more than just an intellectual understanding. It demands a deep, experiential awareness. It involves practices that cultivate this awareness, such as meditation, reflection, and intentional living. By regularly engaging in these practices, you develop a heightened sensitivity to the energies you are putting out into the world and their potential impact. Consider the experience of a mystic from medieval Europe who spent years in solitude, meditating and contemplating the nature of existence. This mystic, through deep introspection, came to understand that every thought and emotion carried a vibration that influenced the world around them. They realized that by purifying their thoughts and cultivating love and compassion, they could positively impact the collective consciousness. This mystic's journey mirrors the path that chosen ones must take. It is a journey of inner purification, where you strive to align your inner world with the principles of compassion, kindness and wisdom. It is about recognizing that your outer actions are a reflection of your inner state and that by transforming yourself, you transform the world. And on that matter, there's a crucial action you should learn if you want to keep your karma positive. This is where most chosen ones fail. Forgiveness and letting go. Holding on to anger, resentment or guilt creates negative energy that not only affects others, but also binds you in a cycle of suffering. That's why the law of karma also teaches us about the importance of forgiveness and letting go. It frees you from the past and allows you to move forward with a clean slate, unburdened by the weight of negative karma. In the Christian tradition, the parable of the prodigal son illustrates this beautifully. The son, who squanders his inheritance and falls into misery, is welcomed back by his father with open arms and unconditional love. This story teaches the power of forgiveness and the possibility of redemption. For chosen ones, it is a reminder that no matter what mistakes you have made, you have the power to forgive yourself and others, to make amends, and to create positive karma moving forward. As you navigate your journey as a chosen one, remember that the most important karma law is not just about avoiding negative actions, but about actively cultivating positive ones. It is about living with intention, mindfulness, and compassion. It is about recognizing your interconnectedness with all beings and understanding that your actions have the power to create ripples of positive change. By honoring this law, you align yourself with your higher purpose and contribute to the greater good. You become a beacon of light in the world, inspiring others to do the same. And in doing so, you fulfill your destiny as a chosen one, living a life of meaning, purpose and profound spiritual fulfillment. But karma has different interpretations depending on the philosopher. Learning how each of these works makes it easier to avoid breaking its rules. Western and Eastern Karma The Western philosophical tradition, especially through the works of thinkers like Immanuel Kant, explores similar ideas through the concept of moral law and ethical imperatives. Kant's categorical imperative, for instance, posits that actions should be performed according to maxims that one would will to become universal laws. This aligns with the karmic principle that ethical behavior leads to positive outcomes, though it is framed in a different metaphysical context. Western interpretations of karma, influenced by Eastern traditions, often emphasize the moral and ethical dimensions of the concept. However, Western thought typically does not incorporate the idea of rebirth to the same extent. 
Instead, karma is frequently understood in a more immediate context, akin to the idea of what goes around comes around. This interpretation focuses on the idea that good actions lead to positive outcomes and bad actions to negative ones, often within the same lifetime. In contrast to Eastern philosophies, Western perspectives often prioritize individual agency and moral responsibility without necessarily invoking a cosmic or spiritual framework of rebirth and liberation. The focus is more on the immediate social and psychological consequences of one's actions, emphasizing personal and communal well-being. Despite these differences, both Eastern and Western interpretations of karma underscore the importance of ethical behavior and the recognition that our actions have significant consequences. They encourage mindfulness, compassion and responsibility, fostering a sense of interconnectedness and moral accountability in both personal and societal contexts. But what happens if you break the karmic law? What are its dire consequences in a chosen one's spiritual journey? Never break the karmic law. When those who are called to a higher purpose ignore or act against the principles of karma, the effects can be more severe and far-reaching than they might be for others. This is because chosen ones have a heightened responsibility due to their deeper awareness and connection to the spiritual realms. The first consequence of violating this karma law is the accumulation of negative karma. Every action that is not aligned with compassion, integrity and love creates an energetic debt that must be balanced. For chosen ones, this negative karma can manifest as obstacles in their spiritual path, challenges in their personal lives or even physical ailments. This is the universe's way of encouraging them to correct their course and realign with their true purpose. Imagine a chosen one who uses their influence or abilities for selfish or harmful purposes. The ripple effects of their actions can create chaos and suffering, not just for themselves, but for the people and environment around them. This disruption often leads to a sense of inner turmoil and confusion as their higher self recognizes the dissonance between their actions and their true purpose. This inner conflict can manifest as anxiety, depression, or a pervasive feeling of being lost. But Eastern philosophies like Buddhism take the concept of negative karma to a scarier level, which is why you have to be extra careful with your actions. It's believed that negative karma can also affect one's future incarnations. Chosen ones who repeatedly violate the karma law may find themselves trapped in cycles of suffering and rebirth, unable to progress spiritually until they rectify their past actions. This concept is rooted in the belief that we must resolve all our karmic debts before we can attain enlightenment. Moreover, violating the karma law can result in a loss of spiritual gifts and abilities. Chosen ones often possess heightened intuition, healing abilities or other spiritual gifts that are meant to aid them in their higher purpose. However, when these gifts are misused or neglected, they can diminish or disappear altogether. This is a form of spiritual protection, ensuring that such powerful abilities are not used to cause harm. Consider the ancient Greek myth of Icarus, who was given the gift of flight with wings made of feathers and wax. Ignoring his father Daedalus's warnings, Icarus flew too close to the sun, causing the wax to melt and leading to his fall. This story serves as a powerful metaphor for chosen ones who disregard the laws of karma. The gifts and powers they possess come with a responsibility to use them wisely. Ignoring this responsibility can lead to their downfall, just as Icarus fell from the sky. Another consequence is the erosion of trust and respect from those around them. Chosen ones are often looked up to as leaders, guides, and examples of living a life aligned with higher principles. When they act against the laws of karma, it not only affects their own spiritual journey, but also undermines the faith that others have in them. This loss of trust can lead to isolation as people become wary of associating with someone who has violated such fundamental principles. The chosen ones who fail to uphold these principles may find it increasingly difficult to connect with their higher self, 
receive divine guidance or experience spiritual growth. The negative energies created by their actions act as a dense fog, obscuring their path and making it harder to navigate their spiritual journey. For chosen ones, this disruption can manifest as a feeling of disconnection from their community and ancestors, which is considered a serious spiritual ailment. The chosen ones must also consider the impact of their actions on future generations. In many indigenous cultures, it is believed that the actions of the present generation affect the well-being of the next seven generations. By violating the karma law, chosen ones not only jeopardize their own spiritual journey, but also the spiritual inheritance they leave for those who follow. Too many violations, and you could face karmic retribution, the worst fate possible for a chosen one. Avoid karmic retribution. Karmic retribution is a profound and often misunderstood concept that carries immense significance in the spiritual journey of chosen ones. Imagine a universe where every action, thought and intention sends ripples through the fabric of reality, returning to its source with equal force. This is the essence of karmic retribution, a cosmic balancing act that ensures harmony and justice in the grand scheme of existence. When we speak of karmic retribution, it's crucial to understand that it is not about punishment or revenge. Rather, it is the natural law of cause and effect playing out in our lives. For chosen ones, this concept takes on even greater importance. Their heightened awareness and spiritual responsibilities mean that their actions are closely intertwined with the energies of the universe. Therefore, the consequences of their actions, whether positive or negative, are amplified. Imagine a chosen one who uses their spiritual gifts to manipulate or harm others. The universe, in its infinite wisdom, ensures that the energy they have put out returns to them, often in unexpected and challenging ways. This is not to punish, but to teach and realign them with their true purpose. It's like a spiritual wake-up call, urging them to recognize the error of their ways and make amends. In many Eastern philosophies such as Hinduism and Buddhism, karma is seen as an intricate web of actions and reactions that transcend lifetimes. The Bhagavad Gita, a sacred Hindu text, emphasizes the importance of selfless action and living in accordance with Dharma, righteousness. When chosen ones act out of selfishness or ignorance, they create negative karma that must be balanced, often through experiences that compel them to grow and evolve spiritually. Consider the tale of King Sisyphus from Greek mythology. He was condemned to an eternity of rolling a boulder up a hill, only for it to roll back down each time he neared the top. This endless cycle symbolizes the weight of negative karma and the struggle to overcome it. For chosen ones, ignoring the principles of karma can feel like an endless uphill battle where lessons are repeated until they are learned. The emotional and psychological impact of karmic retribution can be profound. Chosen ones may experience intense feelings of guilt, shame or regret as they come to terms with the repercussions of their actions. These emotions are part of the healing process urging them to confront their mistakes and seek forgiveness, both from those they have harmed and from themselves. The story of the Buddha's enlightenment offers a powerful lesson in karmic retribution and transformation. Siddhartha Gautama, before becoming the Buddha, lived a life of luxury and indulgence. However, he was deeply dissatisfied and sought to understand the nature of suffering. Through his journey of self-discovery, he realized that true enlightenment comes from transcending selfish desires and living in harmony with the universe. His transformation from a prince to the Buddha exemplifies how confronting and understanding karmic retribution can lead to profound spiritual awakening. One of the most challenging aspects of karmic retribution is its unpredictability. The effects of our actions may not be immediate, leading to a false sense of security. A chosen one might believe that they have escaped the consequences of their actions, only to be confronted with them years later. 
This delay serves as a reminder that the universe operates on its own timetable, one that is far more complex and interconnected than our limited human perception can grasp. Navigating karmic retribution requires a deep commitment to self-awareness and personal growth. But what if you have accumulated negative karma? Does that mean you're doomed to a lifetime of misfortune? Perhaps if you don't balance it out? But if you seek repentance and atonement through your actions, you'll break free from your negative karma. How do you do it? Repentance and atonement. This can involve seeking forgiveness from those they have harmed, making amends through acts of kindness and service, and engaging in deep self-reflection and meditation to realign with their higher purpose. The process of atonement is not just about correcting past wrongs, but also about recommitting to living a life of integrity and compassion. In Christianity, the concept of repentance is central to the teachings of Jesus. The parable of the prodigal son illustrates the power of repentance and forgiveness. The son, who squandered his inheritance and lived a life of excess, returns to his father in a state of humility and repentance. His father welcomes him back with open arms, symbolizing the possibility of redemption and the restoration of spiritual alignment. By understanding and honoring the most important karma law, chosen ones can navigate their spiritual journey with greater clarity and purpose. They can use their gifts and abilities to uplift others and create positive ripples in the universe. Violating this law, however, leads to a path of suffering, confusion and spiritual stagnation. The tale of the Tibetan Saint Milarepa offers an inspiring example of overcoming karmic retribution. Milarepa, in his early life, committed grievous acts out of vengeance. Realizing the weight of his negative karma, he devoted himself to intense spiritual practice and purification. Through unwavering dedication and sincere repentance, he transformed his karma and achieved enlightenment. His story illustrates that no matter how heavy the burden of karma, redemption and spiritual liberation are always possible. In addition to personal introspection, chosen ones can balance their karma through acts of service and kindness. By helping others and contributing positively to the world, they generate good karma that offsets past mistakes. This principle is echoed in many spiritual traditions, such as the Christian concept of charity and the Islamic practice of zakat, almsgiving. It's either this or experiencing the terrible woes of karmic retribution. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.